Hello. Good afternoon. Good hey, evening. Uh, Hadi. A hearty good evening to everyone and welcome to our session on the topic of gastroenteritis in children. Or gastroenteritis in children may be a common condition, but it is important to understand it and treat it for a child's overall gut health. To educate us on this topic, we have Dr. Somia among us today. She's the best person to guide us on this topic because of her extensive experience in pediatrics. Doctor, you have the stage. Hello, good evening, everyone. Thanks for nice introduction, Sean. I am Dr. Soumya, Consultant Pediatrician at Apollo Cradle, uh, Jainagar. Today, my topic, hot topic is acute gastroenteritis. In summer, many cases I am seeing as an OPD and few we have admitted also because of this disease. Why it is, uh, why it is so important to discuss about this topic is, it is one of the most common the, uh, cause of uh, infant mortality. It is number three in the cause of infant mortality. Shocking to say that about 5 lakh children die of diarrheal diseases. Especially in a country like us, developing country, we still have around 67 kids dying out of every thousand live births because of this diarrheal disease. So I thought it is very important for me to educate the public about what is diarrhea and how we should diagnose whether it is mild, moderate, severe, when should they go to the doctor, what medications they should use at home, do they have to take over-the-counter medications or not, and what, how best we can prevent it. Being a developing country, the incidence has come down from past 160 deaths per 1000 to 67, all because the improvement in hand hygiene, the super sanitation has improved, drinking water uh, has been made safe from our country's side. But still, rotaviral vaccine introduction has led to de decrease in the infant gastroenteritis below two years of age. Yet, we are yet to cross, uh, yet, yet to reach the place where developed countries are. Only when we follow certain hygienes and certain safe drinking water and when we follow uh, how the guidelines are given, how to manage diarrheal diseases so that infants should not die. It is very shame to say if, we, if any baby, if we are not able to say, uh, save the baby when the baby has gastroenteritis. Gastroenteritis means infection of the intestine as well as the food pipe where uh, the child might have symptoms of vomiting, nausea, diarrhea. And diarrhea is not a disease. Diarrhea is a symptom. Diarrhea means when the child is having unformed stools and many frequent episodes of watery stools. A child who is breastfed can have 10 to 12 episodes of good yellow color semi-liquid stools, which is LD and normal. And toddlers can have formed stools which are about 4 to 5 stools, which is almost like a pasty consistency, which is again normal. Diarrhea means increased frequency as well as the consistency being abnormal and child being little sick with either associated with vomiting, nausea, fever and stomach pain. Otherwise, without anything, only diarrhea. Diarrhea is on the rise because ever widening menu. Everybody wants to go out. It is summer. Be it, if it is hot, they want to go and eat, drink cold things which might be prepared long time ago and stored in an unhygienic way. Or if it starts raining suddenly, like how it is raining now, it can start, uh, they can go go have golgappa and pani puri, masala puri, floating puri, all this. I have seen kids, even parents, everybody standing on the streets and eating. And few have already traveled abroad for many countries and I'm getting calls from everywhere saying my baby has diarrhea. So I thought I'll approach this topic today. Why it is happening is, one is not taking safe water, drinking water or because we have seen after rains especially sewage water getting mixed to the safe drinking water and water not being boiled not having hand wash hygiene not being maintained either by the food who prepares as well as the child who's eating children do not know they keep handling things here and there but we should educate them and daycare start centers have been started now so when they either some of the children may be asymptomatic but they're still carrying the bacteria or the virus and they can spread it to others. And uh, when they play in the mud or sand, they can also get parasitic infections. So the, the incidence is high during summer because temperature in this hot weather, whatever food is being kept outside, it can get infected in a faster manner than the winter seasons. So if, a, if, a, if you want to give a child freshly prepared food, you give it within two hours or you reserve, reserve it in the fridge and then give it later. If you are keeping it outside more than two hours, then I'm likely to get contaminated. It can be a bacteria, virus, parasite, 
or just food intolerance due to some seafood intolerance or milk intolerance or gluten intolerance. And we can term it as acute when it lasts less than five days. Or if it is lasting more than two weeks, sometimes we call it persistent diarrhea. And chronic if it is more than five days. Today, I'm mostly addressing the one like acute, mean, which is lasting for four, five days. Most of the diarrheal diseases which last less than five days are viral. Viral diseases, you need not worry. It, like viral uh, rota after the introduction of rota viral vaccine, we have seen significant decreases, but it was one of the, and it is still one of the leading cause of diarrheal deaths in India. And it commonly occurs less than two years. This happens because kind of viruses can enter either through the food water, but less in those who are exclusively breastfeed. So I stress upon, I have several times I've spoken about breastfeeding also in my previous episodes. This is the only best thing which you can give as a gift to your child is exclusively breastfeed the baby and continue to breastfeed the baby for two years at least so that you give antibodies and so that they, they don't get frequent infections including diarrhea. But if they are bottle fed, chance of infection is high. More than uh, what a breastfeed baby has because when you prepare a bottle, store it for a while, the bacteria can get accumulated and start multiplying in the prepared bottle. And then can and hygiene if not followed, nipple can get contaminated, bottles being not washed properly. And once they use and rest of the time, they just put it under tap water. That can do. They should always be using hot water to clean the bottles. And, and uh, the, if the, bot, the water itself is contaminated when you clean the bottle, these are the, the chances that a smaller baby gets it. Toddlers are more prone because they, they start handling things, objects, they won't wash hands, they keep fingering their mouth, they explode by teething and they just mouth the object. So they get more frequent diseases. School going children as they grow more than five years, the, inf the incidence comes down. But most of the time it is bacterial because they want to eat out pizza, burger, all these stored foods, processed food, fish, seafood. These are highly contagious and they can cause problems when uh, even I've seen two, three kids uh, two days prior, they would have had pizza with extra toppings, cheese. Next day they get admitted. So cheese, dairy products, these are the ones and eating out processed meat, which uncooked meat, sometimes there's uh, whatever fast food, the food will not be cooked, especially if your meat is not cooked, it will lead to high con uh, bacterial contamination and children can go grow, go, get diarrhea within two days. So within uh, symptoms happening within two days can be bacterial or viral. Viral usually starts with mild fever or may not have fever. One or ten, five, six episodes of diarrhea, loose stools with watery stools, foul smelling might not be there, might not be there. So don't have to panic if the child is playing, active, feeding well, but passing watery stools. You take it as viral. Just you have to maintain, make sure that, see, a body's mechanism, one, you have to get rid of the virus toxins. So you have to take out the toxins by either producing watery diarrhea. So no need to take an anti-diarrheal medicine. That means the one which stops the motility. So I've seen kids, mothers giving lomofen. They want the diarrhea to stop immediately. This medicine particularly anti-motility means it stops the motility of the intestine, but it hinders the toxins from getting rid from the body. So toxins do remain inside your body and they cause more harm than doing good. So never use this anti-motility drugs. Make sure your child is hydrated well. If he's playing well, passing simply five to six loose tools, do not have to bother. Make sure you are giving enough liquids. Do not give pain water or sugary liquids. Sugary liquids means whenever they are having diarrhea, if you start giving fruity and soda, fruit juices, it's even if it's made at home, fruits have high glucose content. And that glucose causes more osmotic load on the intestine. And in fact, it worsens the intestinal diarrhea. So make sure you give, uh, you prepare, if you are preparing at home, you take ORS, which is uh, made at home is one liter of water you take and uh, about six tablespoons, level, level tablespoons of uh, sugar and half level tablespoon of salt and mix it in one liter of water. Whenever child passes water, uh, diarrhea, just replace the water, how much ever is lost, ORS, that is homemade ORS. Otherwise, we have available ORS WHO certified with proper osmotic content, uh, that is uh, sugar should be so much, sodium, potassium content, everything specified so that the child does not get dehydrated. It is not the diarrhea which is the common cause of concern. 
it is the dehydration which is the cause uh, for deaths and mortality and malnutrition which is going to happen later so make sure child is hydrated well either by home foods home foods means always i advise rice based diet rice always is a starch which binds your uh, child's uh, intestinal um, uh, contents and makes it harder like either potatoes or rice banana banana they have a myth if a baby is having diarrhea they stop giving banana if the baby has constipation they give more banana it's actually not true if the baby has diarrhea i would recommend you to give banana which is a binding agent as well as it has potassium it helps the baby to regain the potassium what it is losing through the stools and makes it more little energy energetic stop giving milk milk will uh, have lactose so it will make it more worse so any child less than 2 years if the baby is on breastfeed i recommend them to go for continuous breast breastfeeding breastfeeding uh, keeps the baby hydrated as well as it has antibodies which helps the baby to fight the virus or the bacteria second if the bottle fed i uh, advise baby if to go for low lactose formulas or soy based formulas if it is more than 6 months old but this lactose containing formulas will add to the uh, sugary content right so it will add to more diarrhea and uh, if the baby is already weaned off 6 months above i recommend rice based diet starch containing potatoes banana as i mentioned earlier so if the child is doing well mild diarrhea at home made you are uh, giving what what is the concern is when should you worry is the, if the baby is sick or should i go to the hospital is it virus or bacteria viral as i told you will not have many associated symptoms which i spoke to you about bacteria will have many associated symptoms the you go out eat but in within 24 to 48 hours your child starts getting high fever with chills severe stomach pain stools which are not large but small quantity but associated with mucus of blood and child having severe cramps before stools he gets cramps and very very bad smelling stools can be diarrheal than viral uh, bacterial than viral bacteria is uh, in summer especially e coli which is always in their gut gut it is uh, bacteria which you find in your stools that if anywhere be uh, contaminating the water elsewhere or salmonella which causes typhoid that can cause diarrhea as a primary symptom and these two things have to be uh, addressed if child is getting sicker in these cases do not wait but go to your doctor here we are not going to test all the children with stools being whether it is bacteria or the virus but if it's a outbreak in a day care center or if it's an outbreak in a apartment where many number of kids we are seeing with diarrhea in that such cases we do do stool test as well as the culture test to see which bacteria is kind of causing the, the problem and so we might even evaluate the water of that community which is causing the diarrhea in this cases here we would advise uh, you when you meet doctor we will advise whether the child requires antibiotics along with oral rehydration solutions as well as some supplements to increase his gut absorption as well as uh, zinc which will add to improve his gut uh, to get re- uh, replenished then the other cause for concern is when you should be thinking of severity no need to worry if the child is urinating well drinking see in case of mild dehydration child is active playful you don't see any problem he just goes to the loo passes loose motions and keeps eating whatever he can and then he'll be happy playful in the second thing which is my moderate dehydration in the first part where i spoke to mild dehydration you will not have much weight loss that is either less than 5% of your body's weight will be lost which you can't make negligible but in a moderate dehydration it, you can lose your body, baby's body weight from 6 to 9% and child start getting irritable because his sodium levels potassium levels all go up and down and then they become irritable they start having try thirst more and they start asking for more uh, water but still they are active they are urinating well if the baby is crying and there is tears in his eyes tongue is moist child is taking feeds and excessively thirsty but little irritable in this case also i don't recommend you to be in a hurry or when go to a doctor in a emergency but try giving ors tender coconut butter milk curd rice dal rice kichdi idli at home and this should take it where you should worry is when your child is having high fever with severe abdominal cramps child is vomiting persistently see if there is diarrhea 
and the child is taking orally uh, and you can uh, balance your hydration but if the child is having loose stools and you are not able to take inside you have imbalance in your hydration and that is when your kidneys intake water intake water go, uh, hydration goes down and kidneys urine output goes down here child becomes lethargic means less active child starts drowsy because he is not able to respond to his demands also and child is uh, even if he cries eyes are not having any tears tongue looks completely dry lips look parched eyes get sunken and skin turgor is lost what is skin turgor is when you pinch your son's or daughter's abdomen uh, skin if you pinch like this and release it should go back to the uh, normal uh, like when you pinch like this it should go back to its uh, flat surface within 2 seconds but when you pinch if it stays like in a pinch state more than 2 seconds that means baby is severely dehydrated this is when you cannot give any oral rehydration you have to go for iv in such cases please rush your baby to doctor iv fluids will be started or nasogastric fluids will be given where your oral rehydration can be either if not taking orally can be put through the ng tubes in a faster faster pace so this is where a uh, child has to be hospitalized and uh, given antibiotics as well as uh, iv fluids along with supplements so when to how do we prevent is what uh, is the most important thing see diarrhea is a uh, preventable disease this is because of the hand hygiene hand wash every child uh, should be taught how to wash hands before uh, eating food or after food or after playing every more, many number of times you wash your hand it only not protect you from corona it also protects you from these rare diseases and uh, food whoever prepares has to wash their hand properly the, all these uh, salads whatever dressings we do raw vegetables raw fruits have to be thoroughly washed i would recommend to peel off the skin in such cases if fruits can be peeled off because the insecticides as well as the bacteria or virus can stay on that otherwise thoroughly rinse it with lukewarm water and wash them and uh, if you are going out and eating make sure that you are eating while well cooked food do not take half cooked half boiled and especially if uh, you are storing rice for the next day there is a bacteria called bacillus cereus if you are not cooking it proper rice is kept out and kept inside it gives it foul smell and if you are making something out of it in fried rice they you won't know the aroma aroma of fried rice they would be giving in the restaurants but it might be a previous day food so avoid eating out more especially during summer homemade food is always preferred if you are going out make sure uh, it is well covered because diarrheal diseases spread by this house fly if they are sitting on a fecal matter and they sit on your pani puri stand uh, uh, contents where they have displayed it uh, open in that case definitely uh, diarrhea will be more nowadays we are seeing less of cholera but cholera is one of the leading cause of diarrheal deaths in kids but uh, cholera where they will have severe watery diarrhea rice watery stools this is purging stools initially we used to have diarrheal deaths more because of cholera nowadays we are seeing less thanks to little more improvement in our hygiene techniques and uh, ice ice creams they also are very dangerous because they, they would also be stored for many days and uh, they have to be cut down most important thing i would say is vaccinate your child for rota virus rota is a gift for this century what we are having because rota virus is a severe diarrheal disease which causes deaths under 5 under 2 being more so we in uh, private as well as now government has come up with rota viral uh, vaccine which will be giving at 1 and 1/2 2 and 1/2 3 and 1/2 no point giving after 6 we, we don't give the rota viral diseases after 6 months so always go to your doctor neighboring doctor inquire about rota virus and take rota viral it's just a oral vaccine and it is a boon to our community now and uh, kids kids in daycare as parents sometimes they, they working parents if your child is not well you can't have any help at home so you tend to send your child even if the baby has diarrhea do not do that because that can contaminate other children when they soil diapers are used if the nurse of the caretaker is not washing her hand and if she is catering to another baby then she will be transmitting the disease to another person sharing water bottles in the school or sharing whatever food they take there's that also be of a particular concern 
covering the food, safe water, sewage, especially in the rainy season, we have seen sewage is being blocked. It's overflowing. It can mix with the uh, water, which is uh, drinkable. So we should inform if there is any I mean, uh, big outbreak in your community, please inform the municipalities. They will go and check if water is getting contaminated. The other reason may be amoebic dysentery and all that can also be happening uh, if the child is having severe cramps, abdominal pain, high fever. That is also, we have to inform any child with amoeba that contamination of food or water can be there, especially uncooked meat and fish and seafoods. This you have to take care. If uh, it is infectious, all I spoke to you is parasite, virus and bacteria. There's another uh, gastroenteritis which I'm talking to you is intolerance to food. Commonest thing is lactose intolerance. Lactose is the one uh, which is the sugar which is in the milk. So when the baby is born, if baby is being breastfed, there is nothing like it. But some mothers do fail and they can't feed and they get depressed and baby's sugars go down. We are forced to start formulas. In such cases, when we give formula, they will ha have lactose intolerance. Their baby cannot tolerate the cow's milk protein, which is there in the formulas, which are prepared of cow's milk, right? So in that cases, babies will have severe watery diarrhea. Again, frothy, frothy with perianal, that is anus, where, he, where they pass motions, there will be redness around the anus. So they'll have uh, blisters, redness, with the pain abdomen, watery diarrhea, and redness around the anus, which is burning. The kids start yelling, and they start having bloated abdomen. These things will show that the baby has got more of lactose intolerance. Here, sometimes we advise mother to stop taking cow's milk. It might do some help, but in, uh, we might have to change to low lactose formula also. Sometimes even the systemic infection in a baby, if the baby has a urinary tract infection or if the baby has some other cause of infection also, diarrhea can be a manifestation. In that case, child will be sick looking, malnourished. See, why child gets uh, uh, malnourished? Can, diarrhea can lead to malnourishment and malnutrition can lead to diarrhea because Malnutrition, you don't have a strength to fight the bacteria and uh, poorly fed, poor hygiene, poor uh, uh, environment can lead to diarrhea. But diarrhea can lead to malnutrition because one episode of diarrhea, if it gets better within five days, you are okay. But if the child is getting exposed to the same unhygienic thing repeatedly, even before the baby gains some weight, he'll be losing another few grams, 100 grams. Then baby's growth remains plateaued. And if it becomes severe, uh, many episodes further in their lifetime, their growth gets retarded, they become malnourished. So diarrhea and malnourishment go in hand in hand. So if a child is immunocompromised, especially if the child has a kidney disease or if the child has some heart disease, if the child has uh, some uh, immunocompromised uh, status, in that case, we have to be extra careful to handle these diarrheas. And uh, you should go to a doctor even with the slightest of the infection. And uh, the common uh, disease other than lactose intolerance is food poisoning, which I spoke to you, which is already there. Chronic diarrhea, yes, they can happen if the child persists to have diarrhea more than 14 days. Child, whatever we have done, investigations, treated with antibiotics, no, it's no ruled out, bacteria, virus, intolerance, everything ruled out. Sometimes it can be glued, even irritable bowel or gluten. You, uh, many of the cases we are seeing nowadays, celiac disease, where uh, the gluten, the wheat part is not being absorbed and they are sensitive to that. So in such cases, I would recommend you to go to your pediatrician. We will do some uh, tests and even blood tests to rule out if it is uh, irritable bowel. And then we cut down on what food has to be cut down. Extra nutrients will be added and the child will do well. To summarize, uh, it will be very bad if we lose any child for diarrhea. So I recommend every parent to be uh, using the hand wash technique, safe drinking water, food hygiene, eating less outside and giving homemade food for the child. And uh, never give Coca-Cola, caffeine, uh, stored uh, canned juices or even Tetra Packs when the child has diarrhea, which can lead to acute, uh, severe watery diarrhea and severe dehydration. If the child is uh, severely sick, as I told you, with the increased skin turgor, decreased skin turgor, decreased urine output, sunken eyes, drowsy, bloated abdomen, in that case, please rush to the doctor.
Thank you, and we are open for any questions. Thank you.